What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Marco and on today's show, we've got a real treat for you. We are going to take a look at another Play Games masterpiece. And I don't use that word lightly, masterpiece. That's exactly what this game is. I'm talking about their 2017 release, History Maker Golf. I've played a lot of tabletop golf games and I gotta be honest with you, nothing quite matches this game. The amount of stuff you can do, the tournament mode, uh, the match play aspect. We're going to take a look at all of it today. Cannot wait to show this game off. It is absolutely spectacular. So let's head down to the game room. Go check it out. Now that we're down in the game room, it's time to bust this thing open. And the first thing that jumps out at me, I talked about this in my red, white, and blue racing review. I'll, I'll link that down below. Play Games is absolutely awesome with how they package their stuff it's an eight it's no bigger than an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper it's not very thick i'd say it's about two two and a half inches something like that can easily stick it on a bookshelf easily blends into the rest of your stuff just awesome stowaway one i don't want to call it a complaint because i compliment this box so much um i thought it wasn't going to be an issue in the red white and blue racing game but when you do start getting some of those thicker seasons right and the golf seasons are pretty thick which i'll talk about in just a second you're talking about thick sets of cards, and that can kind of get a little tricky with trying to fit it all in one box. But again, it works. Well thought out. Love it. So what do we get with the game? First, you're going to get a couple score sheets, uh, which I've printed off a few more. You can always get them at uh, playclassic.com. You've got your instructions here. You've got your courses, which I've ordered six courses in addition to the two that come with the game. If you're curious, the two that come with the game is uh, Kapalua, which is the one down in Hawaii, and of course, Augusta National. You can't do without Augusta National. That comes with the game. I ordered six more. We're going to actually be playing one of those today during the playthrough portion of today's video, uh, and we're going to be playing Desert Sky Golf Club, which that's down in Scottsdale, Arizona. For you golf fans, you know that that is the home of the Waste Management Open. Some would argue the funnest course on the schedule. Uh, so what jumps out at me first here? So first... These are your player cards. As I said, they're pretty thick. I like putting them in these plastic bags. But these are two sets. You get one set with the game, which I believe it's the 2,000 stars comes with the game. So you get uh, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Stuart Sink, Steve Stricker. Um, you, know, you think of all the big – VJ Singh. Think of all the big 90 stars. That's what you get with the game. And then I ordered the 2022 PGA set, and that's every player – who played on the PGA Tour in 2022. In totality, that's about 100. I, I counted it out and I already forgot the number. I think it's 168 golfers with that set. And then with the with the set that comes with the game, I think you get another 120 or something like that. And the additional season is not that much money. I think it's maybe 20 bucks, something like that. Well worth it. Um, so that's, that's the basics of what you get. You also get all the pieces to make the game work, obviously. You get some of these, uh, I guess you can call them power up or power down cards. It's like, uh, here, hazard avoidance, caddy tip, clubs up. So I think that's more for match play. I, you could choose to play with these or not. I choose not to, and I won't be using them today. But it's just, again, another well thought out thing that Play Games thinks about, which is how can we make the game a little more strategic and a little more fun? Uh, and then, of course, you've got your History Maker Golf uh, game action book. This is how the, the game works. Some charts. These, by the way, are perforated. So uh, you could cut these out, laminate them, do whatever you want and put them however you lay out your desk. You know, you might have one here, have one here. Uh, another score sheet. This is for match play. So it actually comes with two different kinds of score sheets here. And finally, uh, the tournament mode, which we'll be playing tournament mode today. Uh, another course is down here. Uh, these are some rogue chips. So, uh, a lot comes with the game right off the bat. And there's a few different modes that you could play right off the bat. You could play, uh, regular stroke play. So that's pick two golfers. Okay. We're going to pick Tiger Woods. We're going to pick Phil Mickelson, pick a course. Like I said, the, co the game comes with two courses. You can buy additional courses online, which I did. And we'll be playing one of those courses today, as I mentioned. Uh, and then you do 18 holes and see who wins. Uh, there's match play, which is also a lot of fun. I've tried it. It's great. And actually, let me show this off really quick. Uh, this little quadrant here, I haven't undone these. You can do whatever you want. This little quadrant down here is for match play. So you get some clutch points or clutch punts, uh, clutch putts rather. 
Uh, you track how the golfer is doing. Did he bogey the last hole? Is he parred? Is, did he eagle it perhaps? What is the whole difficulty? We'll get into all that. So this is a nice little tracker you could use for match play. And then finally, which I think is the highlight of this game, no tabletop game has ever figured this out quite like play sports, which is why I love this game so much. And that is a golf tournament. If you're an app of golf fan, which that's actually how I started in tabletop golf, I started with app of golf, right? So in app of golf, you have a course that's laid out on a large legal size sheet of paper. It's about the size of this desk, okay? And it's the hole. And so you get 18 holes, obviously. And you have a little uh, marker and you have to kind of choose where to hit. And then you roll the dice. And depending on, you choose the club, you choose uh, where your target is. It says, I will someday review and do a series of Abigolf on this channel. That day is not today. Uh, but what I'm getting at is when you play Apple Golf, for example, it could take, I've had it happen to me before, it can take two hours to do one golfer's round of 18. For comparison purposes, I did an entire tournament of 125 golfers last night from start to finish, three hours. Now, that's a lot, by the way. I've seen people be able to do uh, one uh, an hour for setup and then a, another hour or so to do the actual uh, uh, tournament. I don't think it needs to be that much time. I'm a newbie. I'm still trying to learn the game. So that's why it took me three hours. But the fact that you can do an entire tournament, an entire golf tournament with 125 golfers in under three hours is pretty amazing. So let's get into it now. I'm going to unbox everything and we'll come back and I'm going to show you how the game works, we're going to set up a tournament, we're going to do a little bit of playthrough for you to really show this game off. All right, so now that I have everything laid out here, I'm going to do a sample hole to show you just basically how this game works, and then we're going to dive into a tournament. So I have here Rory McIlroy's 2022 Pro Season card and Justin Thomas's 2022 Pro Season card. Uh, I have Tiger Woods on top here. I'm doing a PGA Tour season, which I'll get into when we get to the tournament portion. I like to throw in a little bit of anarchy, if you will. So I took Tiger Woods' card from the 2000 Stars deck and I threw him in. It's basically what would prime Tiger Woods look like against the 2022 PGA Tour. And spoiler alert, in last night's tournament, he actually muffed a shot on 17 and did not win the tournament because of that. And this unknown young gun by the name of Sung J. Im won the first tournament of the year. We'll see. Maybe he could... Uh, Follow it up with another win today. Um, okay, so we have our two cards here, and we're going to play the first hole of the Desert Sky Golf Club in Scottsdale, Arizona. So when you look at a card, here's the first thing that jumps out at you. The big number four, that means this is a par four. It's 408 yards. Gives you a little description of the hole so you could sort of create that image in your mind. It says this is the only hole on the golf course without a greenside bunker. So an aggressive tee shot could lead to a birdie opportunity. So uh, pretty fairly straightforward hole. There's no special uh, things to watch out for. So just for example, you see on hole two, challenging. That means hole two is a challenging hole or what's, a, what's in store in hole three. Here we go. Uh, DB cordial. What does that mean? It means it's a very easy hole. Cordial holes are very easy and it has a friendly green and the green is direct. So if you, again, we're trying to paint the picture in our mind's eye, what that means. It's a cordial hole. So you're standing at the tee box. It's easy. I can see the green straight ahead. It's a friendly green. They're trying to paint the picture for you of what the hole looks like. So we're on hole number one. The first thing you're going to notice is, as I said, it's a par four. We're at 408 yards to the hole. The next thing you're going to take a look at is these dice rolls. So what this means is if you roll, in this instance, a three, four, or five, if that comes up, well, look at that. A three came up. That means the the hole is going to control the action. If any other number comes up, the golfer is going to control the action and their card. It's a lot like Stratomatic. Have you ever played Stratomatics where if you roll one, two, or three, the offense usually controls. If you roll a five, four, five, or six, it's the defense. Similar concept here. Uh, and then what will happen is you're going to be rolling all these dice at one time. And let's just say Rory, that's what this marker is for, by the way, Rory uh, it shows you who is up, and that plays a big role when we play a tournament, which we'll get into. So Rory's at the tee box. He's about to tee off. He rolls a three. The hole is going to control. The next set of numbers you're going to look at 
is your metallic and black die. Now, Play Sports has the, a very similar engine across all their sports games, which is it goes from low to high. So in this instance, he rolled a one and a five, so that you read that as a 15. You come down to the course, 15, what does it say? And it's symbols. So this game's really easy to understand. You don't need to memorize numbers, it's just symbols. Look at the symbol. Well, that's a sand symbol. So what that means is Rory comes up to this beautiful first hole at Desert Sky Golf Club, takes his shot, puts it into the sand. So then you're gonna come over to our uh, game book here and we're gonna find where the sand is. And here it lays it out, par three, par four, par five. Well, we're on a par four, so we're only gonna be looking at this guy right here. Uh, was it on the first or second shot? And there'll be little numbers. So like, let's see if you roll an 11, that's the rough symbol and it's on his second shot. Well, here it's the sand symbol and it was on his first shot. So he found a fairway bunker. He muffed it into the side and he's got a little, you know, uh, barrier bunker down there maybe. So his first tee shot, it goes into the sand. So you're going to look at par four. It's shot number one, shot number two, or shot number three. It's the first shot. And then we're going to take a look at the green die. Remember, we're supposed to roll these all at once, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. And it's a six. So you're going to come down and you're going to look at what does six say? That's when we have to look at our player cards and all. So like here, here's a great example. Here's Tiger Woods. Okay. Look at Tiger Woods's card compared to JT or Rory McIlroy, right? He's got just about every ability on his woods. He's a bomber. He's a legend. He's a king. He's got the scatter ability on the irons. He's a champion. He's a hero. He's got the laser and soft ability. He's a master at recovery. He's got the golden putter. If, if it comes down to experience, he's an icon. He's dynamic versus look at Rory McIlroy on woods. He's only got the bomber ability. Irons, he's only got the champion, the hero, and the soft ability, and he's got the little dot next to it, which means he doesn't even get to use that ability unless the decider guy came up with a bullet, which for this hole it didn't, so he can't even use those abilities if they come up. Well, let's go down to recovery, and for Rory McIlroy, it says Sandy. So the first question we're asked on our game book here is on the first shot, he rolled a six, it says Sandy. Well, he is Sandy. So TV friendly bunker shot to the edge of the green sets up for DB difficult putt for birdie. So here's the beautiful thing. We just played three shots of golf in one dice roll. That would have taken 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm, be, I'm exaggerating, but it would have taken a long time in most other tabletop golf games. So he's got a DB putt for, what did that say? Par birdie, DB putt for birdie. So we come over to uh, our chart here. So this is separated out. So here are clutch putts. This isn't a clutch putt. Here's our birdie or, uh, excuse me, par or or worse putt. So par, bogey, double bogey, triple bogey, bogey. You would look at this chart. Here's our birdie or eagle or ace putts, if there is such a thing, that's down here. So this is a DB difficult putt to get a birdie on the first hole. So you see this number one here with a star. What does that mean? That means he gets the white die and he gets the decider die. And in order for him to sink this birdie putt, he needs to hit a one and get a green bullet. He got the green bullet, didn't get the one. So now, just like regular golf, you miss the birdie shot. Now it becomes a shot for par. So here's the cool thing about this game. Everything moves up in getting easier. So if you miss one shot on DB difficult, now the next shot is for par and you come over to difficult. So he's got a difficult shot, a uh, difficult putt rather for par. And now he has to get a one, two, or three in order to sink this putt. Or if he has one, which we'll get into a little bit more depth with the um, tournament mode, he could use one of these uh, performance chips. Well, in uh, I forget what it's called in, in this game, but in the NASCAR game, in the red, white, and blue racing game, they're called performance chips. We'll just keep calling them performance chips. If he had one of these, he could use it, and now all of a sudden, it goes from a difficult putt to a moderate putt. So instead of one, two, or three to drain it, he can have a one, two, three, four, or five. So really, just a six. So for the sake of argument, let's say he had one, let's say he used it, let's get a die, pick your color, it doesn't really matter, I like green. Um, so anything but a six and this thing is in the hole, it's in the hole. So he pars the first shot. So let's do, 
Uh, let's get Tiger out of here. Let's do Justin Thomas just to sort of show off how this game works. And let's let's do a hole for real now, okay? So it's par four, he's on the first tee box. So I like to load up, if you will, my game book. So if you haven't figured it out already, it's pretty simple. You find out what par you're on and just pull that bad boy up. So this is a par four. If it were a par three, you use this page. If it's a par five, you go to the next page. And then there's varying results that can happen. I hope we get a weird result here so I could show you what that means. Uh, so we're gonna roll all the die. All right, first one you always look at is the white die. That determines, I think, yeah. Uh, that determines if we're looking at the golfer card or the, the hole card. In this case, you roll the five. Five is listed on the hole, so you have to use the hole card. So what did he roll? Well, he you look at the black and metallic die. It's two one, so it's an 11. And look at that. It is a rough, it, so the tee shot went into the rough. Uh, shot two went into the rough. So imagine it this way. You hit a tee shot, it landed in the fairway. Your second shot, it's in the rough. That's what that means. So we got to break out our book again. Let's go over to the rough shot. Our rough charts here. It's a par four. And we're supposed to look at the green die. So we roll the one. So come down to par four. Second shot, that's what 4.2 means. He rolled a one. Now it starts asking us questions. Workman, well, is Justin Thomas a workman? No, so you move over. Otherwise, perfect strike from an uneven lie, pin. Okay, so now we go to our pin chart and there's symbol. So that symbol was this little circuit, uh, circle target symbol. You could have gotten this square with a dot in the middle, he didn't. It's the circle one, so we're gonna roll again. I like to roll the decider die with it because most of these have a decider die with it. So let's roll it, see what he gets. A four with a uh, blank. So you come down to four. Breaks right and rolls past the pin, moderate putt for par. So we head over to our routine putts for par. Worst chart, moderate, he needs a one through five. So basically the same exact scenario as his playing partner, Rory McIlroy. Anything but a six, and this thing is in for par. Oh, ho, ho. So he pooched it. So now he has a what amounts to a gimme putt for bogey. So what happens during gimme putts? Well, if it's for a bogey, you take out two dice and you roll them. And if he only misses it, if you roll two sixes, that's the only way he misses it. If this was a gimme putt for par, for example, it's three die. So you need a six, a six, and a six to miss it. Everything else is in. So here's his bogey putt. It's in. So Justin Thomas will bogey hole number one. McElroy will par hole number one. And then we would move on to hole number two and keep playing. So that is the basics of how this game works. Um, I didn't get an opportunity to show you some of these examples here on uh, if the player controls. So let's just do one really quick. Uh, let's say he rolled a one on this hole. A two is good enough. Let's say Thomas rolled a two on this one. So that means his card controls. So then what you would do is you would read these dice in numerical order. So a one, three, three. That's what that means. So if this was a six, it'd be one, three, six. If this was a one, a five, it'd be one, three, five. So in, um, but that's how you would read it. So one, three, three. So you come down to a par four, you look for one, three, three, and you start going through the questions. Is he a yield man or puny? Uh, no, he's not. So you move to the next one. Is he a hacker? I know he's not a hacker. So you go to experience. All right, so now we have to find the experience chart, which is right here. We're on a par four and it's always the green die that controls. So a par four, roll the three. So par four, roll the three. Is he a prospect? Uh, no, Justin Thomas is not a prospect. So otherwise, well-shaped shot sets up an easy putt for birdie. You get the rest. So that's how a hole is played. Um, and with match play, as I said, uh, you can go one-on-one, -on -one. you can play certain cards against each other, you gain these performance chips that you can use on one another. It's a lot more strategic, and uh, which is what I wanna show off now. So now let's set things up 
to play a tournament. And this is where this game really shines. All right, now we're all set up for a tournament. Now, what Play Games is so good at in this game is simulating three rounds of a golf tournament without having to play three rounds of a golf tournament with, what is this, 125 golfers? I mean, look how thick that is, okay? So we have our golfer cards here and they're all set up and ready to go. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna flip these cards over and I'm gonna kinda try and talk while I'm shuffling through because this is, again, this game really, really shines here. Now one, uh, I do wanna give a quick shout out to uh, Keith Avalone, the uh, owner, operator, CEO, whatever his title is of uh, Play Sports, uh, Play Games. I keep calling it Play Sports, I am so sorry, Play Games. Um, I actually received this set and it was unperforated and I didn't know if it was supposed to be like that or not. So I just emailed the company and without even asking, they said, you know what? They were supposed to be perforated. We'll send you a new copy. Uh, just the customer service is absolutely outstanding. Uh, I had to give them a huge shout out, but I went ahead and cut these cars and they work just the same. So, um, fantastic customer service. Didn't even ask for it. Just wanted to know if that's how they came. Um, great stuff by them. So thank you, Keith, for that. So tournament mode. What's about to happen is we're about to find out who made the cut for our tournament here at the Desert Sky Golf Club for what I'm calling the WM Open. Uh, and another thing I'm going to do, I'll show you a little bit later in the video, is, you know, the Play Games community is so outstanding that somebody actually went ahead and made an app for doing a tournament. And I'm gonna show that app, it's completely free. I'll send the, I'll put the link down below. Uh, it's Reggie Bowers, I believe, is the, is the person's name. Huge shout out to him as well. Created an app where you can track from start to finish your History Maker Golf Tournament. Outstanding. And, it, and it, it is like a app on the computer as if you're playing a video game from the 2000s. It's got a leaderboard. It's got flags. It's got uh, going up and down the leaderboard. And it plays along with the game, meaning, and you'll see what I mean here in a second, it'll actually go in order of who's at the tee box and who's not. It's just absolutely outstanding. All right, let's do another couple shuffles here. And let's find out who is making the cut for our tournament. So one more shuffle and we'll call it, we'll call it uh, good to go. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna separate it. Since we have more than 100 golfers, you're gonna separate it in half, all right? So I like keeping the element of surprise, so I keep everything face down. So here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, it's about half. So we're gonna call one group the morning group and one group the night group. Let's say this is our morning group. So now, we take this group and we separate them into eight. Doesn't have to be exact, doesn't have to be perfect, just roughly even. I like to kind of measure it. If you want, if you feel inclined to, you know, count these out so it's perfectly even, go for it. Rule book says you don't have to do that, so that's about even. So then what we're gonna do is just like the red, white, and blue racing game, we are gonna go through our uh, weekly activities, if you will. So that's what this sheet is for. And we're on this here, this column here. So first two rounds, all golfers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two die, doesn't matter as long as they're different colors, and we're gonna roll it and we're gonna read it how play wants you to read it, which is low to high. So two and a six, that makes 26. And we come down and we read what 26 tells us to do. And it says, draw four golfers and then the top two remaining. So we'll take our first group here. Two golfers get drawn. So congratulations to Alex Noren and Francesco Molinari. You have made the cut and we'll just put them in a pile face up now. And then it says top two remaining golfers. So let's flip these guys over. And down in this bottom left corner of your cards is what their ability is to make cuts. That's essentially what that means. So the lower the better. Well, we got a 1B. That's Phil Mickelson. So he for sure makes the cut. And then who's left? Uh, Taylor Moore. He's a 3C. So he will make the cut. And that means Bryce Garnett and Sean O'Hare. I am so sorry. You will not be playing in the tournament. You have been cut. Then we go on to our next pile here. Roll the die, it's a 12. 
12 says draw one golfer and then one top remaining golfer. So draw one. So Darren McCarthy makes the cut and then just the top remaining golfer will make it. So Ricky Fowler is a five. Oh, he's out because Cameron Percy is a 3B. Cam Davis is a 3A and Roy Sab Rory Sabatini is a five. So we've got a 3A and a 3B. A is higher than B. So Cam Davis will make it. And that means... These three guys, Sabatini, Fowler, and Percy, will not make the cut. Let's come over to our next pile. It's a 12 again, so we know draw the top one golfer. Whoa, this is, this is going to be a tight cut. So it's Matthias Schwab makes it. And now we're just looking for the top golfer. These always make me nervous because you could get some big names cut early. So Sam Burns, we'll put him at the top. He's a 1C. Do we have any other ones in here? No, we don't. So that's it. So Sam Burns makes the cut. That means Alex Smalley, Sepp Straka, Charles Howell, Jonathan Vegas, David Lipsky, who was actually in our final group last night, Aaron Wise, who also was in our final group last night, and Kevin Na missed the cut. All right, next group, a 44. 44 says, draw one golfer, then the top four remaining. So we'll draw one. Keegan Bradley has made the cut. And then the top four remaining. And right off the bat, John Rahm, he's a one. That should do it. Tony Finau's a two. That should do it. We got a five, a three. That So we're looking for one more. Oh, boy. Someone's getting cut. Cameron Smith is a one C. So uh, Peter Malnati's out. Stuart Sink is out, and we've got a 2C. That won't make it. So Adam Scott is cut. Ryan Palmer is cut. These four golfers have made the cut, and they are moving on. All right, next group. 36. Draw three golfers, then top, remaining, top three remaining. All right. So here are the three that are making it. Adam Hadwin. Wyndham Clark and Sam Ryder. Wow, all right. So we got some newbies and prospects and uh, air quotes, no namers going in. Now we're looking for just the top three, and there's only three left. So they're all going to make it. Luke List, Brandon Wu, and Tommy Kim. They're moving on. A 13. 13 says draw two golfers and then the top remaining. All right, so draw two. Michael Glickich. And Mark Leishman have made it. And then top two remaining. So this is a tight group. Cameron Champ with, oh, I see a two. That's Sung J. Im. He's going to make the cut. He won the first tournament of the year. And there he is. Tiger Woods will almost always make the cut. And, yeah, that's it. That's your top two remaining. So Woods and Eam, they were actually paired together in last night's tournament. Went down to the wire. So that's exciting. So Kevin Yu, Abraham Answer, Mark Hubbard, and Cameron Champ are cut. All right, two groups left in the morning group. 56. Draw one golfer and then the top five remaining. So Gary Woodland will make it, and then we're looking for the top five. So let's just sort these out and see what happens. So Will Zalatoris, he's going to make it most likely with a 2A. We got a 3C, another 3C, another 3C. A 5C, a couple of 4Cs, a 5B, and a 4C. All right, so what did that say again on 56? Top five. So we know Zalatoris, it's one, two, three, four. And then we can only keep one, but I have a homebrew rule, which is this, that if you have a tie in this stage, when we're just seeing who made the cut, so these three golfers are tied to Sergio Garcia, Justin Lower, and Kevin Streelman. My homebrew rule, they all make it. So that means Eric Van Ruyen and Danny Willett are cut. And we have our final set of our morning group. We roll a 36. 36 says draw three golfers and then top three will make it in. So draw three. It's Cameron Young, Lucas Herbert, and Hideki Matsuyama. He missed the cut yesterday, so it's good to see him back. And then top three remaining. So let's sort these out again. Oh, they're all four. Look at this. So they are all going to make it according to my house rule because here's one, and that's Harold Varner. 
And then everybody else is a 4B, so they all tie and make it in. All right, let's do our afternoon group here really fast. Again, we're going to sort these out into eight piles here. There's only one golfer in that pile. That's not going to work. Uh, like I said, just kind of eyeball it. You could do whatever method you want. I've seen people, you know, actually deal them out like cards to try and make it as even as possible. It doesn't really matter. In the best interest of time, I just sort of eyeball it and see what happens. All right, first group, a 56. Draw one golfer, then top five remaining. All right, one golfer. It's Joaquin Neiman. He will make the cut. Then top five remaining. How many cards do we have here? We have six. So someone's missing the cut unless we have a tie. So Patrick Harrington and Keith Mitchell are both two. So they're in. Matt Kuchar is a three. He's in. So we need two more. And look at this. Matthew Wolf and Joel Damon are four A's. Mackenzie Hughes is a four B. That's not good enough. He is cut. Uh, we haven't had an outstanding golfer pop up yet, and I'm hoping we do so I can show you what happens there. Next pile of 46. Draw one golfer, then top four. So Dustin Johnson, he missed the cut last night. He will make it now. He's moving on. And then what did that say? 46 is top four remaining. Uh, well, that's uh, this one's easy because we've got a whole bunch of threes and fours and somebody with a seven. That's Kramer Hickok. So he is out. Everybody else makes it. They're moving on. Next group. 35. Draw two golfers, then top three remaining. So Patrick Rogers and Xander Shoffley have moved on. Now top three remaining. Oh, oh boy. This is a stacked group. And again, I don't need to do much thinking here is we've got three run, three ones and then a three and a four. So Corey Connors and Kurt Kitayama are out because Patrick Cantlay, Justin Thomas, and Rory McIlroy are moving on. All right, getting close here. 34. Here we go. Draw one outstanding golfer and then the top three remaining. So whoever I draw here is a t outstanding golfer which they will be put into the star category, which I'll explain what that means in just a minute. So that means this golfer will be guaranteed to be near the top when we actually start playing the final round, and that's going to be Cameron Tringale. Wow. All right, so Cameron Tringale is an outstanding golfer. What that basically is trying to simulate is this golfer had an outstanding first three rounds. He shot you know, a 69, a 66, a 68, something like that, and they are more or less going to be leading the tournament heading into the final round here. Uh, 34, so one outstanding, then top three remaining. So let's find out who our top three remaining are. So right, Scotty Scheffler, that's a one. He'll make it. Uh, got a couple. I don't know what's left in this pile. All right, Spieth will make it. He's a 2A. And that makes it easy. Shane Lowry is a 3A. Brandon Steele was a B, so he's cut. Oh, man, Bryson DeChambeau. Is not going to make a cut again. Is he's a four B? He can hit the ball a long way, but History Maker Golf has him graded in the tournaments as a four, and that doesn't make a, quite that many cuts. Just to be honest with you. All right, four groups left. Thirteen. Draw two golfers, then just the top remaining. Oh, this is going to be a tight group. All right, top two. Daniel Berger and Scott Stallings are making it, and then just the top remaining golfer. All right, so who do we have in here? I see a bunch of fours. Wow, all these fours are going to get cut because Lanto Griffin will make it with his 3B. Everyone else is out of here. That's Brandon Grace, Trey Mullinex, Anna Baranelary, Andrew Landry, and Callum Terran are cut. Three groups left. A 13. Draw two. Oh, here we go again. Top, so two golfers, and it's going to be Seamus Power and Mito Pereira, and then just the top remaining. So what do we have here? Well, this will be easy. Maverick McNeely makes it. He's the only three or better golfer in there. Two groups left. Another 13. This is a tough draw. So draw two golfers in the top remaining. So it's Taylor Gooch, fan favorite. 
And Brian Harmon will make the cut. And then just the top remaining of what's left. So what do we have in here? Oh, man. Brooks Kepka is going to miss again. He's a four. So far, the leader is Tom Hodge. It's a three. So can anyone beat a three A? Well, here's another three. Yep. Victor Hovland, that's the man to beat, and no one can beat him. So Victor Hovland emerges out of that group. Everyone else is cut. And now our final group, a 66, APA's favorite number, and it's draw one outstanding golfer. Oh, boy. So everyone in here is going to get cut, and I know there's a few big names still hanging out there. And just the top guy is moving on with an outstanding. And it's J.J. Spawn. J.J. Spawn. Everyone else is cut. So who do we lose? Chaz Reeve, Matt Fitzpatrick, Max McGreevy, Billy Horschel, Tommy Fleetwood. Oof, Colin Morikawa. That's tough. Taylor Pendrith, Max Homa, and Tyrell, Tyrell Hatton. So, as you can see here, we've cut about half of our stack. Now, what do we do with the remaining golfers? Well, there's round three is effectively what it ends up being. So third round. So to conduct the third round of the tournament, the cards of the golfers who made the cut will be arranged in seven new final round stacks with the outstanding golfers in an eighth stack, which we put them off to the side over here. So now what I like to do again, just to kind of keep things interesting, is I'm going to shuffle the golfers that made the cut. And we're going to find out who is going to be in our final groups on Sunday. So what we're imagining here is we're getting ready to do the telecast. And we're looking at the scoreboard. And we're seeing who are going to be the top seven or eight golfers. So what we're looking for here is what's going to happen. What I should say is what's about to happen is we're going to grade these golfers out on their score. So A, B, C, D right? We're going to grade out what's going to happen again based on dice rolls. So it is still pretty random, but it's going to work much the same that it worked when we were trying to find out who made the cut. Golfers who have better grades, so you know your ones, twos, and threes will most likely be A's, B's, golfers. Everyone else is going to be C, D. But what's going to happen here is you, if you are a B, below a B, so B minus and down, no chance of winning the tournament. If you're a B plus or a B, you really have no chance of winning the tournament. So we're just looking for our outstanding golfers and our A's and A minuses, which you already have, our stack of outstanding golfers. So things are about to get really interesting. So seven piles. How many do we have here? Uh, seven. Okay. Let's try and even this out a little bit. And I'll move these up here. All right. So let's find out what happens. So we'll take our first stack. And let's roll and find out who we're looking for. We've got a... I don't know that. Oh, got what's her name down here. <laughs> 46. Draw a golfer contends with an A-. minus. So this first guy that we're going to pull out is an A-, minus, and it's Joel Damon. Wow, okay. Joel Damon is an A- minus golfer. And he will be put there as such. And then 46 says, lowest golfer finishes with a D minus. Everyone else with a D. Oh, boy. So we're about to lose some big names here, I think. All right. So we're looking for the lowest number. Lowest number. Right now, it's a 4C. Nope. There's a 5. It's Francesco Molinari. So he is a D minus. So that's where he goes. Everyone else is a D that basically means they're out of the tournament. So they had a horrible third round and we are losing some pretty big names here. Justin Rose is out. Hideki Matsuyama's out. Uh, Kevin Streelman's out. So that's, that's a tough break. So they will go into the D column. All right, next group 46 golfer contends with an A minus. So we do it again. Wow. Another 46. Jesus. All right, first one we draw is an A minus. Shane Lowry is an A minus. The lowest golfer is a D minus. Oh my God, we're losing some big names. No. Oh, this sucks. Oh, the, what a terrible draw. Okay, well, Mito Pereira is our lowest. Everyone else is a D. And look, we lost Scotty Scheffler, Jordan Spieth. 
Daniel Berger. Wow, what a terrible draw. This is going to be really interesting. So we're going to get a new golfer, essentially, that wins this tournament. That'll be kind of fun, I guess. All right, a 13. Come on, let's get some better names here. No offense to our friends Joel Damon and Shane Lowry and Cameron Tringale. I want some bigger names here in the final grouping. Uh, 13. Golfer contends with an A+. plus. All right, so it's another outstanding golfer, essentially. So Sam Burns is an A-plus golfer. What happens to everybody else? The next top golfer contends with an A-. minus. Everyone else is a C+. plus. So we're looking for our best guy. That's John, John Rahm right now. He's a 1B, and it's going to stay that way. So he is an A-. minus. Everyone else is a C plus and will not be playing in the final round. So we lose Cameron Smith, Tony Finau. Man, tough crowd out there today. All right, next up. 26. Draw a golfer contends with an A minus. Everyone else is a B minus. So Tommy Kim makes it. He is an A minus. And who are we losing to B minus? Sergio Garcia. Will Zalatoris. Oh, oh, Tiger. Wow, Tiger's a B minus. He will not be featured in the final group. Well, it is a possibility he can come up, and I'll explain that when we get there. And our friend Sung J. Im, who won the tournament last week, in theory, last night in reality. So those guys are B minuses. Wow, this is a really interesting group here. Not a lot of big names up there at the top. 26 draw he contends with an a minus everyone else is a b minus so matthew wolf is an a minus everyone else is a b minus so we've got who do we lose here uh, victor hovland dustin johnson taylor gooch man tough group all right two groups left we'll see what happens Another 26. Wow, the dice gods have not been kind today. So the top, so the guy, I'm going to draw someone. They get an A minus. Everyone else is B minus. I drew Richard Bland. Everyone else is a B minus. Who did we lose? Rory, JT, Patrick Cantley, Xander Shoffley. Oh, brutal drawing. Brutal drawing. All right, last one here. 22. Top golfer contends with an A. Everyone else is a B. So Joaquin Neiman gets an A. These guys will go to the B. It's Matt Kuchar, Patrick Harrington, and Keith Mitchell. Whew. All right. So that was rough. I'm sorry. That was rough. So we're going to – not a lot of fan favorites are going to be – but that could be interesting, right? That, that could be a lot of fun to see – who of these young guys and, and young guns can really rise to the occasion now that some of these big, big names like Tiger and Rory are out of it? So now we're going to set up for our tournament. So here's what happens. We are going to choose a winning score. Or not a winning score. Well, it is a winning score, right? So uh, I don't have any course history yet at Desert Sky Golf Club. So what we're looking at is... Is the score under 263? Is it between 263 and 267? Is it between 268 and 272? I'm going to say this is about a 273 to a 277 course, all right? So then you go to your chart to find out what these golfers shot in order to find out where they rank for the final round. And that's what this score sheet is for. So we're going to use a 273 to 277. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to come back because I'm going to roll. I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take Sam Burns and I'm going to roll this bullet here. So if the bullet comes up because he is an A plus golfer in this round, that means he shot a 205 in the first three rounds. If it's a blank, that means he shot a 206. So I'm basically going to take make this easier visually so come take a look down here so we'll start with burns 205 is here 206 is here all right he got a 205 jj spawn a 206 and tringale also a 206 so what does that mean that means our leader with 205 heading into the final round is going to be sam burns 
and he scored a 205. And that means in second, it's going to be JJ Spawn. And he has one back. And Cameron Tringale with a 206 is also one back. Then you would do the same thing for our A golfer. I'm just going to kind of sort these here. Joaquin Neiman, but we're going to come down to our A chart. And he's going to be between a 207 and a 208. So what did he get? He got a 208. So one, two, three. He's in fourth place technically. So Neiman shoots a 208. So he's going to be three shots off the lead when we head into tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead, pause the camera. And I'm going to do all this off camera. I'm going to grade out until we fill up 12 golfers. So we have six pairings. 12 golfers, and if we have any left over, I'll show you what happens because that means someone from the B in this instance can come up if we don't have a full 12. So I'm going to pause and we'll come back and show you what happened. Okay, I went ahead and sorted through and you'll see that we have two open and available positions. So when that occurs, so that means we've filled everything out from our outstanding golfers, our A group and our A minus group. In this case, nobody was in the B-plus group, so then you would cascade down to see who comes up from there. But we do have three golfers in the B group with two open and available positions for the final group. So you can do this any way you want. There's no official rules on it. Uh, what I like to do, and yeah, this is a little selfish, but I like to look at whoever is in the next group. Well, in this case, it was laid out just like this. So I couldn't pull from the B group or B-minus group because golfers finished in the B group. So of course I would have pulled a Rory or a JT or a Tiger. So unfortunately they will be missing the cut today uh, into the final. Not that they'll be missing the cut. They have a chance to come back in, which I'll get there when we get there. A long way away from that. So they have a chance to come back in later on, but it's really a one and only chance and certain criteria need to be met. So we're going to be looking at the B group and we are going to choose two golfers to join our final grouping and oof. well you know what sorry Keith Mitchell so he's going to stay down in the B group but he'll have a chance to come back so I'm going to bring up Patrick Harrington and Matt Kuchar and let's just mark this down so uh again I'm going to be rolling for their score so Kuchar so if the bullet, he's a, he's a B. So if the bullet comes up, it's a 213. If not, it's a 214. So he scores a 214. They both are in with 214. So wow, that's a rough score to come back from. And you'll see exactly what I mean in just a moment. And it's another brilliant aspect of this game, uh, which I will lay out here in just one second. So he will, wow, they will both be nine strokes back so that means they will be starting off camera uh and i'll explain what that means right now all right so uh to keep things orderly with my season i'm actually going to put these back in order of their grades because i'm going to enter that into the computer and i'll show you that app that is completely free and able to download um i'll put the link below and i'll explain what that is and show you some screenshots later on in the video so what i'm doing now is we're ready to play our final round but I am now putting away our tournament pre-cut. And now we are getting ready to start our TV telecast. So uh, a stroke of genius and why I think this game is a masterpiece is the visual aspect. So what you are looking at here is a visual representation of the Sunday Golf Leaderboard. This is your leader. This, this group is one stroke back, two, three, four, five, six, and off camera. So we will work back to front. And that's another thing. I'll show you the score sheet here. Hopefully we get it all the way in the camera. I think it's all the way in there. The score sheet is laid out staggered, right? So our first group, you work back to front. First group, first grouping is going to be Matt Kuchar and Patrick Harrington. And then it's going to be, and I'm going to put them off camera down here. And then it's going to be Richard Bland grouped with Matthew Wolf. And they're starting 
Five strokes back, they're starting. Let me just uh, write this down. So we've got uh, Matt Wolf. I will go worse to better, technically. So Richard Bland and Matt Wolf. And then the next group is Tommy Kim, who's also five strokes back. So let's just kind of stagger these so they're a little easier. And Shane Lowry, who is also five strokes back, but today will be our third pairing. Our fourth pairing is going to be Joel Dahman, who is also five strokes back. And my personal favorite and who I'm rooting for right now is John Rahm, who is four strokes back. Then our fifth pairing is going to be Joaquin Neiman and Cameron Tringale. So Neiman is three strokes back to start the, the round. But his playing partner, Tringali, is only going to be one stroke back. And finally, our top pairing leading the tournament. Well, rather, it's going to be Burns and Spawn. But Burns is leading the tournament, and Spawn, JJ Spawn, is one stroke off the leader. So let's just write these all down. All right, and now... So let me show you this really quick on camera. It's pretty fantastic how this works. So what we did here is we filled out our groups according to their grades, sorted them. Remember, we did the bullet die and the blanks to find out what their three-round score is. And then we went worst, in theory, worst. So really, this is, you know, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th place. There's room for 12 golfers in the final pairings. So Kuchar and Harrington are paired. They're our lowest scores, and they're going to start nine strokes back. They have so much work to do. Uh, then Bland and Wolf, Kim and Lowry, Damon and Rom, Neiman and Tringale, Spawn and Burns. And so we're going to go ahead and tee off and start our final round. And it's going to start with Matt Kuchar and Patrick Harrington. But here's something that is really, really cool about this game. There's so many things that are really cool about the, this game, but this especially. All right. So... When a golfer is more than six strokes behind the leader, there's a fast play option. So you could play the hole in its entirety, but in the best interest of time, there is a single die roll to determine what they got on that hole. I like playing that way for the simple fact that when these rounds get pretty long, and they can get pretty long, uh, you kind of want to hurry along, especially if you're in hour two or approaching hour three. And, and it will work out this way where eventually there's going to be a leader that's either so far ahead or there's only going to be maybe three guys that are within three shots and everyone else is like six, seven, eight shots back and there's only three holes to go. There's no way they can catch up. Just quick roll them and move on. So I'm going to quick roll our first parry because they are more than six strokes back. So we come over. First of all, we get our first hole. It's going to be that hole we played earlier. Hole number one, a desert sky. I'll put it down here. I think that's easier to read. Uh, hole number one, a desert sky. And there's nothing on this hole. It's not cordial. It's not daunting. It's not DB cordial. It's not DB daunting. It's normal. So we come down to our out of tension golf, contention golfers chart. See a normal. We'll start with Matt Kuchar. He rolls a three. A three on a normal is a par. So he pars the first hole. Whoops which is a par four. And I just like to pre-fill as we go along here. So he pars hole number one. So he's gonna stay nine strokes back. And Patrick Harrington, same deal. He has a four, which I know is a par on a normal. So both of them start the round with a par and we are off to hole number two, which again, the brilliance of this game it's still going to be Kuchar and Harrington on hole number two because of the staggered starts, just like a real tournament. So if you take a look at this, when the six pairing, which are our leaders, tee off, our first pairing is already finished with their sixth hole. So it's just like a real golf broadcast. So when we're down to the final three holes on the 18th green of our lead group, 
the other golfers are all done already. Uh, it's a really, really cool, well thought out thing. Again, uh, you can do it however you want. I like following that because to me, that is a huge, huge plus and something really cool and really unique to this game. All right, so back to Matt Kuchar. Hole number two is a challenging green. So uh, it's it kind of confused me at first, but they will sometimes put the greens up top. So like if it's a friendly green, all it'll say is friendly here or challenging. It'll say it's challenging uh, like it does here. But challenging is not an option on the out of contention list. It's only daunting daunting with a bullet, normal, cordial with a bullet, cordial, or DB cordial. So what I'm going to go ahead and assume is this is another normal hole. It's another par four, so we'll mark that down here. So Matt Kuchar is rolling off the normal chart on the out of contention. He rolls a one. That's a birdie. So Kuchar is going to birdie hole number two. That drops him from nine to eight back. He's still not within six, but he's started a little bit of a charge. Maybe we'll see if he can get back in it and Harrington will roll a five that is a par so our first two out of contention golfers are off and now we move to group two who goes to hole number one and we will start with Richard Bland so Richard Bland will tee off on hole number one he is five strokes back so he needs a good result here so uh nobody has a performance chip to begin uh, you can add that into the game as well. You could maybe, uh, if you remember from Red, White, and Blue Racing, sometimes you could do, you know, when you pick your TV drivers, some players like to play this game where they pre-fill based on maybe storylines or maybe they're leading, maybe they won the last tournament. Like, I'll tell you right now, if Eam was in this group, I would have started him with a performance chip, almost like a confidence boost, but he, alas, he's not here. Uh, so Richard Bland will begin. He rolled a five. That is a card, a, 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 a roll on the card. So that means the hole will control. So the next thing we're going to look at is the metallic and black dice. It's a 23. And a 23 says rough on his second shot. So not a good start for Richard Bland. So we'll head over to the rough chart. On a par four second shot. And he rolled a one. So workman. Is he a workman? No. So, perfect strike from an uneven lie, pin target. All right. So, he looks like he got a great recovery here from the rough. So, we look at pin target chart. We will roll again. We'll roll our white die with a decider die because that comes up quite a bit on this chart. Roll the five with a bullet. So, five says breaks left, stop short, moderate putt for par. So, he's got a moderate. I need to keep that chart. Moderate putt for par. So, come to our par or worse chart. One through five, so only a six will be a miss. He's fine. So Richard Bland pars the opening hole and will stay at five strokes back. Next up is Matthew Wolf. So let's let's just kind of move these golfers like a little bit of a rotation. Again, you could do this however you want. And the app, which I'll show off here in just a second, the app really makes this a whole lot easier because you don't even need this. Uh, it's all on your computer, uh, which I'll show in just a second. So Matt Wolf is up, teeing off for the tournament, the final round of the tournament on hole number one. He rolls a four, so the course will control. Rolls a 25. That's a fairway. So he rolls a square, which means fairway. So we head over to our golf cam court or course, fairway course. Uh, so course control chart. On a par four, and he rolled a five. So is it a daunting hole, or is he a scatter golfer? Well, it's not a daunting hole, but he is a scatter golfer. So it says, sand and rough issues, DB difficult putt for par. Oof. Tough break for Matt Wolf. So he's, gonna, he's got a DB difficult putt for par. So we come over to our chart here, and that means he needs only a one. Anything else, and he misses the putt. So he needs a one, doesn't get it. Okay, so now he's going to be shooting for a bogey. So what you do is it goes up in easiness by one. So now he's got a difficult putt for bogey, which means he needs a one, two, or three. Otherwise, he misses it. 
Oh, a four. Jesus. So now this is rough. A horrible start for Matthew Wolf. So now it's going to be a moderate putt for a double bogey. So anything but a six. Oh, my God. Oh, no. So it's going to be a triple bogey for Matthew Wolf. Jeez. So basically playing himself out of the tournament in the first hole. Um, all right. Well, he's got an easy putt for triple bogey now. So the only, so now you roll three die and the only miss is if all three come up sixes and he's fine. So a triple bogey. So he gets a seven, a seven. Oh boy. On the first pull. So he is out of contention. So he comes down here with Kuchar and Harrington. So that's how that would work. What a terrible opening hole for him. And you move right along. So next up, his playing partner would be Shane Lowry. And let's see what happens to Shane here. He's still on hole number one. He rolls a one. So he controls. I'm glad I got to show you this because I haven't had one of these rolls yet. So, a, so you sort them in numerical order. Lowest to highest. So he rolled a one, one, five. So, and this is a par four. So you get out our book. You head over to your par four chart. A one, one, five says, is he a human or a scatter? He's neither. So then you come to the next one. Is he a utility? He is not. So then it says results one one two through two one two two, which that this qualifies. He's got a moderate putt for a birdie. So Shane Lowry can move into four strokes back and join my guy John Rom if he can drain this moderate putt for a birdie. So it's gonna be hard. He needs a one or a two. He got it. Look at that. Shane Lowry opens up his round. With a bird, uh, and I did this out of order here. I apologize. I just realized that. So he will move up to four strokes back with John Rahm. So we skipped uh, Tommy Kim. So let's do Tommy Kim really quick. And then I want to show you this app. This app is really awesome. Um, all right. Tommy Kim is up. A six. Yes. All right. I'm glad I got. So I could show you basically everything that would happen uh, here, So on a six, it's golfer's choice as to how he wants to approach this hole. So we're going to come over to our par four chart. And this only comes up when you roll a six on the first roll. So you have the choice here to either attack the green or play it safe. Why would you want to play it safe? Well, if you play it safe, you get a gimme putt for a par and you get a blue chip. Now, again, in play, play games, blue chips are like gold you could use them to lower difficulties you could use them to take control of courses uh so let's say you're on the 17th green you're trying to go for the win and you've got one of these blue chips and after you roll everything it comes up that you've got a moderate putt for birdie and you need a birdie to win the tournament well you could play this chip and turn that moderate putt into an easy putt to increase your chances to win it so you really want to collect those tokens uh, but we're very early here, and Tommy Kim is five strokes back, so I think he's going to go for it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the attack the green chart, and you're going to roll again. You're going to re-roll your white die and your decider die in case you need it, and then it's going to tell you what comes up. So Tommy Kim's going to go for it. He's got a lot of ground to make up. I know it's only the first hole, but five strokes is quite a bit, so he's going to go for it. He rolls a three, reaches the fringes of the green, a double difficult pitch for birdie okay so not the worst result in the world but uh i'd rather have a shot to get a birdie here than to just take the putt in this situation so well db difficult is the hardest putt that you could possibly get so not only does he need to roll a one on the white die he needs a bullet as well in order to drain this putt so he needs a one and a bullet in order to get a birdie and he gets neither. So now it becomes a par putt, which is a difficult par putt. So again, now he needs a one, a one through three, a one, two, or three 
to drain the putt. Again, you can use any die you want. I usually like the green when we're putting. All right, so one, two, or three, and this is a par. He pars it. All right, so Tommy Kim pars the opening hole. Now, so what you would do then, and I'm, you know, if I went and did this entire tournament, this would quite frankly be a two and a half to three hour video. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to kind of show you some things and then I may come back and pop back on and show you how this turns out if you're really that interested. Um, but we have here, um, so what we're looking at here now, you would keep going, right? So now the next group up would be hole number three for our leaders. So I went out of order there by total mistake, uh, but you would have hole number three and it works like columns, right? Then when... The first pairing is on number four. The second pairing is going to be on three. The third is going to be on two. The fourth is going to be on one. And the fifth pair doesn't tee off until the first pair is on their fifth. And the last pair doesn't tee off until the first pair is on their sixth. And you would keep going all the way until you have a tournament winner. And it's really, really awesome to see the tournament unfold because you'll have guys shoot up the rankings and then have three really bad holes. Like I had John Rahm last night. Uh, I love John Rahm. I love him. I love watching him play in real life. He's a uh, really interesting guy. Great golfer. Um, I was a little disappointed for Rahm because uh, last night in my tournament, he was all the way to one stroke back. He you know, had started red hot. He had three or four birdies in a row, and then he just started slipping, slipping. Then eventually, by the time we got to the last three or four holes, he was off camera, and I was just single rolling him, uh, and he ended up finishing, I think, in ninth or tenth. Uh, I keep talking about my guy, Sung J Im. He was hanging around in the two, three, four area, the whole tournament. And then those final four holes, he had three birdies in a row. He gets all the way up to the lead. That was fun to watch. And then Tiger was three strokes back the whole time. He actually started off with back-to-back -back bogeys and fought his way back. He was the leader for some time. And then I said, he pooched it. He pooched on 17. So he went one stroke back. So that is, in a nutshell, tournament mode for History Maker Golf. It's really awesome to see the tournaments ebb and flow, and which brings me to the app. Now, um, I'm gonna, I'm doing this. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm gonna kind of just show you some screenshots, and, and I'm gonna add it in here in post production. Uh, but what's really cool, someone, uh, Reggie Bowers, went and created this app. It is so freaking awesome. Uh, it, it allows you to track your tournament from start to finish. Who made the cut? Who didn't make the cut? I mean, look at this. It's like a professional scoring app. This thing is outstanding, and you don't need the sheet of paper anymore when you use this. I mean, look, you've got leaderboards off to the right. You could set your schedule, set your courses, add whatever golfers you want. I took some time over the weekend to add 125 golfers that were in my fictional PGA Tour events. Uh, I have an 11... 11 course uh, season um, with playoffs added in. So really 14 for the whole season. No, it's eight. I'm sorry, eight regular season and uh, three playoffs. So check that out. So final thoughts here. Uh, like I said, I may come back and show you how this plays out in the end. I'm not going to play the full tournament here today. History Maker Golf. No one's been able to capture a tournament on the tabletop quite like this. Nobody's been able to capture, uh, capture the drama and who makes the cut and who's charging. Uh, I mentioned, I, I forgot to mention this. Uh, when you get to the 15th hole, there's a, a series of dice rolls that you can do to see if someone from the B group, which remember we lost a whole bunch of golfers in the B group, can actually come up and join the tournament. That's a lot of fun. Uh, this game, for the price, the bang for your buck, I think this whole set was like like 40 or $50, something like that. It, it is truly, truly awesome. I'll link everything down in the description. If you're a golf fan, if you're a tabletop sports fan, this is a must have for your collection. Play sports, history maker golf, five stars, 10 out of 10. This game is so much fun. Why don't you let me know in the comments, do you have this game? Do you like this game? Would you recommend this game? I certainly would. And let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. That's my review of history maker golf. We'll see you next time. Have some fun.